That's right, everybody. We're back on the Comic Con podcast. We're going to be talking about none other than the Batman. I am, of course, one of your hosts today, Justin, aka Nemesis Prime. Saw it the other day. Got my man Manimal here. What's going on, buddy? Yo, what's up? Um, this has been kind of a rough couple days because both you and I have seen the Batman. We've refrained from talking about it. I think you gave me like your initial idea the night because I asked you, you saw it the night before me, and I was like, what do you think? Mm-hmm. And you said, whatever. And then afterwards, I talked to you the next day, and you're like, don't tell me anything. Just tell me like two words. And so I just gave you like a quick <laughs> of what I was thinking, but we haven't talked about this at all. So uh, yeah, we excited. haven't gone we haven't gone full deep into this. Um, this is only our second DC review because we did the Justice League last year, uh, the Snyder Cut. Did and- we do Suicide Squad? I think we well we did Suicide Squad, but we didn't do it like as a separate bonus content. Oh, like during like the, we're doing this, yeah. like we kind of just talked about it in in one of our episodes. But gotcha. you know, with this, it's a lot better because we could do spoilers. It's a lot more drawn out, so it's not bogged down with all the other content that we're putting out. But of course, you know, we always like to you know try to bring in guests, especially for our reviews. You know, we've we've had a few people here and there, and of course, TiVo helped us on the Shang Chi one, and you know, we of course had to bring in one of our other fellow Lords of Longbox members who's a huge, massive DC and also Batman fan, Dark Side Jedi. This What's going on, man? This is very true. If you know me, you know me well. <laughs> Batman is my guy, man. And yes, I saw the Batman yesterday, and I got to say, I wasn't disappointed. And that's an understatement. <clears throat> Who yeah, outranks so. for you, Batman or Titans, Team Titans? Because you're a big oh, Team Titans fan. Yeah, well, okay. I am a sidekick fan. Okay. I have a love for sidekicks. Um, but I, and I'm a DC guy, so obviously Teen Titans just fits with that, right? Because Robin uh, and everything. But, but yeah, I mean, I guess I, it's. I mean, Batman as a whole, gotcha. Teen Titans is like a part of that. You know what I mean? Because <laughs> it's Fair. still, in my opinion, Bat Family. Yeah. In a way, in a way, um, the original sidekick is Robin for sure. But the original sidekick is Robin, and I mean, who doesn't love Robin, bro? Yeah, but you had to have Batman before you had Robin, and we got an amazing Batman this week in the theaters. Man, uh, Matt Wells is his name, Matt Wells, the director, the right, or Matt Reeves, Reeves, Matt Reeves, Reeves. Yeah. yeah, I was confused he, too. Yeah, he. I mean, I don't know. Nolan who? Yeah. I'll go out and say it. I'll go out and say it. Let, let's get into this. Like, this was, um, you know, we're going to go around the horn. Obviously, we're going to talk a lot of spoilers. So if you're listening to this uh, and you haven't seen the movie, you know, skip over this until, you know, it gets done and uh, come back and hear our spoiler <laughs> review with the three of us. Um, Zach, you know, why don't you kind of start us off, you know, things that okay. you liked about it, things you didn't like about it. And, and then we'll just kind of keep going around the horn. So this is maybe it's better that I go first because maybe I'll aggravate you too. Because uh, <laughs> I definitely let me preface this by saying I did like it. I liked it quite a bit. Um, I'm not on the bandwagon that seems to be going around like the Internet and everything saying that this is so amazing and awesome, like the greatest Batman movie of all time. And I'll, I'll kind of tell you the things I didn't really like about it. But there's a lot of things I really loved about it. Um, trying to think where to start. So <clears throat> first off, I thought that the, there were certain elements of it that were just amazing. I think by and far, the villains stole the show for me in this movie. Um, I thought the portrayal of Penguin was amazing. I loved uh, how he was kind of this scummy crime boss, but also kind of a coward as well. And you could tell like throughout the movie, you kind of were wondering like initially, initially I thought it, but it seemed like too on the nose that he was the rat, you know? But it wouldn't have surprised me because he's self-centered. He's only out for himself, you know. But he really had that, like, cheese dick, soprano, like, mob boss vibe oh, to him. I like, totally greasy, got, like, right? uh, to me, I'm like, damn, he invoked Robert De Niro. Like, he looked like yeah. a Robert De Niro gang gang and, like, uh, you know, like an old, <laughs> right. I don't know. He, had to, he even looked like him a little bit. And I yeah, had to, yeah. like, I was, I, I think I turned to my wife at one point in the movie and I was like, oh, my God, like. I have to actively and even like trying to look, I couldn't see, I could barely see Colin Farrell. No, I didn't like if see you would if, if you wouldn't have known it was Colin Farrell, I don't know how you would have guessed it was Colin Farrell. Um, so I loved the penguin and I couldn't be more excited for like the uh the penguin HBO Max series. I think that's gonna be awesome. awesome. Um the Riddler, 
Dude, the take this take on the Riddler was amazing. Um, obviously, the only the only version we really have is the Jim Carrey. Of course, we have the Gotham TV show one as well. But this Riddler was so creepy and like dark serial killer. Um, and it just was awesome. Um, in fact, actually, last night my wife was reading something else online that someone had kind of put out like, hey, you know, I, I don't know where it was. It was on Facebook something. It was like, Batman's uh, PG-13, but maybe you shouldn't like bring your kids to it. Just FYI, it's kind of a little adult. And my wife was like, what? You know, why, why is she saying that? And my wife was thinking more on like the sexual aspect of it. And I was like, well, think about it. Like the Riddler's doing some like kind of sadistic, like torture murders in this, mm -hmm. you know, it's, it's pretty it dark. Seven. It was very yeah. seven-ish, yeah. you know. And like Saw as well, yeah. you know, uh -huh. kind of like, so I really liked the Riddler. Um, I loved, I think that <clears throat> the aspects of it that I loved the most was, it was like kind of the first time we've ever saw an emphasis on like the detective aspect of Batman yes. in a movie. Um, they even made the world greatest world's greatest detective line there. I loved that. Um, I loved how shitty Batman was in a way too. Like, so like new and kind of got his ass kicked and made mistakes and stuff. Like I mm -hmm. appreciate that. Um, and I loved the dynamic between Gordon and Batman. They were more of a team in this movie than I feel like they've been in any movie. Mm -hmm. the, the Nolan trilogy was pretty close. You know, Gordon was like mixed up a lot, but this one was so much more like Gordon was almost like his Robin in this movie in right. a way. Mm -hmm. Um, well, the scene when he's like, get out of here, you know, punch me in the face, get out of yeah. here. That right there solidified. No, you haven't seen that in any other uh, <laughs> right. mo Batman movie, really. I mean, you could say the Nolan movie when he's when they're coming for him after Harvey Dent gets killed. Right. That's but that was nothing like what we saw in and this one. The fact that he was like allowed into crime scenes and he was almost kind of accepted by the law enforcement right out the gate in this movie. Not necessarily accepted. Some of them but some tolerated. Of them. Tolerated. But at at kind first, of like, when he first yeah. walked in, you saw them go, you know, you freak. You know, like they, right. they, they were kind of against him. And then as we went it on, goes yeah. on, you know, they realized that he's with them and they had respect. But yeah, man. So those are kind of the elements I really liked about the movie. Um, I also liked Robert Pattinson as a Batman. I thought he was good. Um, the thing. I think the thing I didn't like the most about it was, and I know I feel like it maybe it was in one of our group chats. Someone mentioned this, but I don't mind that there wasn't much Bruce Wayne. There was more Batman. That's fine to me, but Robert Pattinson as Bruce Wayne and Batman had one emotion the whole movie. Like there was not, I don't feel like they gave him any depth as a character necessarily. Like he was literally just angry, sad the whole movie long. And there was no switch in his character. There was really no change in his personality at all throughout the whole movie. And I, it kind of bugged me a little bit. Like I didn't get much from him. And now I get it that this might just be like the beginning movie of what looks like a zero year type trilogy or something. And we might see more going down the line, but I wasn't crazy about the, um, that kind of depiction. It kind of bugged me a little. I was like, yeah, I think it's, it's more of cause he's a, he's tortured. I think even right. Robert Pattinson says that in an interview, like, Bruce is, is is a tortured person, you know, for anybody who's read or seen the, you know, the animated movie of like Batman year one, mm -hmm. you know, he's very positive. He really wants to clean up the streets and you get that in this movie where he says that to Alfred and, and to Selena, but yeah, you're right. He has that, you know, still that tortured aspect. Uh, there's a scene where, you know, he sees the kid's mayor uh, or the mayor's kid. And yeah. like, you know, he's like, you could tell like it's, it's eating at him because he's already been through that. Right. Well, I think and, it also and, the, the, the little when Alfred's in the hospital and it's kind of mm -hmm. like that moment where there wasn't much connection between the two of them throughout the whole movie. And even that moment, I felt like it was good. Like I liked the scene well enough, but because we hadn't got much else from him dynamically, like personality wise, that scene wasn't as touching as I feel like they wanted it to be, at least for me. It didn't, it didn't pull on my heartstrings that scene with Alfred because it hadn't really led up to it. It was almost just like out of nowhere in a way. So uh, my take from that was in all of the other Batman movies, we have seen Alfred as a father figure. Mm -hmm. In this one, he even says, "I w I wasn't a father to you." You know, and he he didn't get the emo I didn't get that he had the emotional 
uh, fatherly connection. He right. may have trained him how to fight. He may have trained him how to be a badass and how to use technology, but he didn't train him how to love or feel. And mm -hmm. I think that's where this Alfred differs from all the other Alfreds that For we've sure. seen because this isn't the father figure Alfred. He even says in the beginning, you're not my dad. Like, when have you ever heard him say yeah, that, really? That was harsh. Other than, yeah. other yeah. than in comics, I've seen it. But <laughs> it's it's in, an, in any movie, he's always had that fatherly love. Yeah. And as for, um, you know, Bruce Wayne, I mean, the movie was called The Batman, not Bruce Wayne. Uh, we got The Batman. We got 95% of Batman, and we got 5% of Bruce Wayne and the 5% of Bruce Wayne that we got, if you remember the scenes were, he was at the funeral, he confronted Valcone, he uh, was at the hospital. So these weren't like charity moments that you see, you know, Bruce Wayne driving up in his Maserati <clears throat> and getting in and, you know, rubbing elbows with Gotham elite. He was not, part of Gotham elite. He didn't want to be part of Gotham elite. So this, this really, to me was a different take on Bruce Wayne. Mm -hmm. As far as Batman, this was, in my opinion, the most comic book accurate Batman we've seen so far. Um, with the armor, the, the guns, he didn't use any weapons other than his grappling, uh, uh, you know, his, his batarangs and all that kind of stuff. In other movies we've seen, um, you know, oh, he's always got some guns or whatever, <laughs> yeah. you know, um, and the scene that drove it home for me as being the most realistic, well, <laughs> when I say realistic, I mean, in a comic book sense, Batman was when he got his ass beat and he injects himself with that adrenaline just so he can get back up. Was it adrenaline? I, I, I want to hear, I want to hear something. Justin's take on the movie too, but since we're here, that shit was green, bro. Like right out the gate, I was like, well, "Holy shit, venom? is that venom?" I was, I thought it was venom. Okay. That shit was green, and I remember being like, "What the fuck, dude?" He just injected venom in his leg. Like that was awesome. But I, yeah, I, I didn't yeah. take the venom take, but yeah, I mean, it makes sense since it was green. It was green. You're right. I didn't yeah. notice that. But it definitely but, had. I saw an article um, online this morning that says that oh, are they teasing a no man's land setup slash you know villain for the uh -huh. next movie with that thing? But well, yeah, I, I mean, we'll... they flood Gotham City, right? In yeah. no man's land, they they destroyed it so no one could enter or leave, right? I mean, it mm -hmm. wasn't flooded, but it was there was some major destruction. So, I mean, there are significant parallels. Um, at the end, we see Gotham, Goth, or Arkham City. I mean, I'm sorry, Arkham Asylum. Mm -hmm. I mean, does Bane break them all out? And we have... <laughs> City of Bane yeah, also? City of Bane. I don't know. <laughs> I mean, who knows? Who knows? What do you think, Justin? What was your your general opinion before we get in the like? The well, let's get let's go to our guest, Ryan. Okay. You know, uh, up and downs. What did you you know? Okay, you well, okay. So so, I'm I'm coming at this. I'm I'm, I'm I just saw it yesterday, so I'm still riding the high. I got to see it again to determine if it's really, you know, better than Dark Knight. I don't want to go there yet, but I will say as far as Batman, the Batman. It was the most action-packed Batman movie I've ever seen. And I, from start to finish, I mean, it was a three-hour movie, and I didn't get bored once, really. Um, it starts out hot. It starts out with a, you know, a group of kids that just they just get whooped. And when he strangles the one kid and, is, and he electrocutes his neck, yeah, that's Batman, bro. That's yeah. Batman. When have you that seen awesome. that kind of thing? Like, the way and the... the, the, the the cinematography for me, the way they set up the angles, the wide shots, the close-ups, um, Catwoman, I haven't heard anybody talk about her. I thought she was phenomenal. Zoe Kravitz killed it. I mean, her, her look, her style, her, her attitude, um, you know, her, her moves, the team up with her and Batman was great. Um, you know, Riddler stole the show in my opinion. He, he, he's the best comic book villain since, um, since Heath Ledger's Joker, in my opinion, 
that was awesome. The psychoticness, but also still giving us what we know to be the Riddler when they took when they unmasked him and he laughs and he has that like <laughs> that kind of Frank Gorshin laugh that we see from 1966 Batman. Like it's like yeah, that's the fucking Riddler, man. Even though he's insane, batshit crazy, as they would say. Mm -hmm. You know that was for me like oh my god, it was such a geek wood moment. You know what I mean? Like oh my god, like that Frank Gorshin Riddler laugh to me was just so cool. Um, you know, I did see a lot of parallels between uh, Nolan's Joker and this Riddler. Um, you know, a lot of the way, a lot of the same um, mannerisms, a lot of the same, like, what he was doing kind of was similar. So I guess in a way it was redundant or repetitive, but ugh, who gives a shit? Like, to me, it was, it was so, it was, it was not close enough to make it where it was the same exact, but it was, I, I felt a little bit of Nolan in that character, the Joker. Um, and then fuck, speaking of the Joker, we got a little glimpse, we got a little glimpse mm -hmm. and, um, it helps to now um, that, that interview that you sent Justin mm -hmm. about, uh, Matt Reeves talking about his use of the Joker. Mm -hmm. It, it really tied it up. It really made, cause at first I'm like, wait, his face looks fucked like his Matt, what's, what's going on? And it was, it was almost like that, uh, the man who laughs from like the thirties or whatever. Like, yeah. It was like that weird like forced grin you only saw a very little bit of it but but that that's on purpose that's on purpose yeah. as we find out through that interview where he wants him it, he wants it to be a, 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 a like a genetic defect where he can't not smile and stuff like that but i digress it's not about the joker it's about the batman and the batman kicked ass uh frank maroney or not frank maroney um uh, Carmine Totoro. Falcone. Yeah, Falcone, like phenomenal. Totoro the Jesus was great. Was the great. Jesus as Falcone. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and um, man, uh, the the fact thoughts on that... thoughts on Falcone is Catwoman's father. That's okay. That's Didn't okay. it doesn't really matter. It right? doesn't matter. No, it's not, no, because that's it, what it was in point. Long Halloween. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's not a like a point. big deal. Yeah. No, not at all. Not at all. I, I actually liked it. It gives her a little bit more of a backstory as opposed to in a just little showing bit up. Yeah. You know, um, her mask needs some work. Yeah. I didn't like that. It was cool, yeah. but whatever. It was cheap. It was like low rent. But we're talking about year two. Right. And the coolest part for me is that this is almost like a, you know, like, you know how Gotham the TV show was like a villain of the week. You kind of learn about that villain. This seems like it's starting the villains from square one. The Joker isn't the Joker yet. The yep. Riddler just became the Riddler. Uh, you know, we, and the Catwoman is learning her thing. Batman is on year two. We have such a great universe set up for us. I mean, let's get the scarecrow in here next, man. Oh yeah. All right. So Justin, so just stone. 9.8 for me. 9.8 for me grade. Wow. If you're going to grade okay. it. Yeah. Okay. He's already given out the grades. Yeah, I'm movie, sorry. So I'm shit, sorry. dude. Yeah. <laughs> Spoiler well, alert. Spoiler no. alert. So, yeah, this movie, it, it was just amazing. You know, I, hands down, I, the here is, this is the only, the only issue I had with the movie. And then we'll get into a lot more of the, the details of why. The only issue I had of the movie was the end credit scene was bullshit. <laughs> That's the only issue I had, but it was funny. It made sense. Wait, Goodbye. Oh, it said goodbye. Oh. In the Riddler's um, in the Riddler's little, little font, computer no, font. Say. Yeah. Uh the only issue I had was when um Batman and Catwoman kiss and it's like this this message has been approved by Thomas Wayne and then it's <laughs> it transitions to the scene where Bruce is like watching his father run for mayor and I'm just like that was kind of cheesy in a way. Um, but other than that, the, the movie was great. Like, you know, both of you guys said, uh, the villain stole the show. Uh, Batman is Batman. I love how the entire movie, nobody calls him Batman. No, the even vengeance. Selena yeah. constantly. Vengeance, she's always yeah. saying vengeance. She's Only like, oh, Riddler with his notes. Right. Yeah. You never, you know, he never refers to himself as that. Gordon never refers to himself as that. So, I mean, it, that's just an amazing thing because, you know, you could have, just like, you know, the Joker movies called the Joker. This is obviously called the Batman. Like you could have called this anything else and it would still be an amazing movie. Like, I mean, obviously you don't call it vengeance. You call it the Batman. <laughs> uh, I really liked 
the cinematography, the best thing about this movie is that he's in 99.9% right. of the movie. Yeah, Finally, an actor true. who isn't afraid not to show his face. Like, I think that's that's phenomenal because you get so much Bruce Wayne in all these other movies. The mm-hmm. Bruce Wayne parts, to me, are the boring parts. We didn't have many boring parts here. There's no subplot. Like, other there than... There definitely was no subplot, yeah. Like, Except and that's what's great. Like, yeah. there was never, like, a, seri- a scene where it's just Alfred by himself and... Or, you know, it's just Selena, like even the scenes where Selena goes back to her apartment, like, you know, Bruce is on the rooftop. It's still he's there, mm-hmm. you know, uh, really the only scene where they're not in the same room or vicinity is where she goes to Falcone uh, to meet up with him to kind of kill him, even though he's in the he's in the iceberg lounge. But he's not like in in that scene. But everything else, he's always there. He's always there with Gordon in the back. He's always there, you know, following Selena or yeah. You know, everything, Alfred, whatever it is, there's never, you know, a time where you don't see these two characters together. And the um, smallest of detail that really impressed me was his eye smudging. You know, you actually yeah. saw that, okay, when he takes his mask off, he's right. got some fucking eye makeup on. You no other Batman saw yeah. You never see that in any other Batman, although they all do, right? So yeah. that was cool. And we didn't have a fucking 15 minute origin story. We didn't yeah. get to see his parents die. They did it through a news broadcast. They foreshadowed it with the kid, the mayor's kid dying. Mm-hmm. That was awesome. That was it definitely awesome. took a page out of like the the Spider Man reboots. Yeah, you know, right. like hey, look, yeah. we we know that they're dead. We know the story, <laughs> right? Exactly. <laughs> we know they're dead. <laughs> Alconi talks about it. Like, okay, yeah. mention it, fine, but we don't need a scene of it happening over and over and over again, which was good. Thank you for doing that. Yeah. Um, and then just like some other quick little things to touch on. I loved him narrating. Like, yes. I oh, yeah. yeah. I could see the boxes. I could see that the black awesome. boxes in the comic book strip of the narration yeah. as he's reading it or as he's talking. It was great. Just the, the opening <clears throat> scene, the whole fear thing. And, yeah. and we've seen, you know, we've only really seen that one other time where, like, you know, the villains or, you know, people that are trying to be thieves or whatever they're trying to do and they're scared of something. And you see that and you're like, is he here? Is he there? And uh, I think it's the scene in, and I said this to my brother, I think it's the scene in um, The Dark Knight where they shine the light and the two guys yeah. are like, ah, not tonight. And he's not like, tonight. oh, you got a better chance hitting the Powerball than running into him. Yeah. Uh, but yeah. Because yeah, every one thing, of those scenes, you thought maybe he was going to come out of those shadows yes. and you were kind of like waiting for it and he come, none of them, none of them happens. Nope. It was, it was not great. until the train. Yeah. Um, and I really like this. And this is, I feel like is something newer. And they, they introduced this in, in the Batwoman TV series is the journals with him talking about, you know, everything. And that's something that I've never seen before. And, and, you know, Ryan, correct me if I'm wrong. Like, we've never really seen him write journals. No, I've never seen his, it. You know, everything. No. Uh-uh. And, and, I mean, and I love that it had year two. You know, that was just, that was a little mm. cool little Easter egg for you just to kind of give you an idea of where he's at in his psych, in the, in the Batman process. Um, what do you guys think about the Batmobile? Badass. I mean, it was cool. It's it, it's so hard with the Batmobile, right? You know, because especially if you're keeping it grounded. If you're keeping it grounded, which they seem like they really were trying to do with this, this is what the Batmobile probably would have been, like a muscle car, you know? Um, mm. Even Christopher Nolan's was super grounded. I felt like it was, you know, as a trilogy. But like the tank aspect, it was kind of like it made sense as you kind of went on with it. But initially, you're like, okay, so he has a yeah. tank. Like, um, that's my least favorite Batmobile of any of the. Oh yeah, the tumbler is just. Yeah. Right. Yeah, I liked this one. It was cool. Um, it definitely fit. Like, you know, he's young and he's like, oh, what what kind of vehicle should I get? Let me get a muscle car and like a half build and just like <laughs> put some kind of a rocket booster in the back. Um, I liked it, dude. I mean, yeah, that the Batmobile was decent. I mean, the chase scene was was awesome. was edge of your seat exciting, in my opinion. I thought that oh, was yeah. a phenomenal chase scene. Yeah, like realistic. Like it yeah. was realistic in terms of you always think about that when you watch these chase scenes, like moving in and out of cars and then the other traffic. This very much, it wasn't so much the penguin; it was everyone else on the road was right. Batman's biggest like issue. Um, yeah. I, yeah, I thought that was great. Yeah, it was never like it's not too unrealistic obviously in, in the first one where he gets the tumbler and he's 
driving on rooftops, like <laughs> yeah. jumping really, from see, rooftop. I, to I roof. almost feel like this as okay. So there was the scenes where he was just getting lit up by machine gun fire, right? Yeah. yeah. So I guess in a way, you know, can you suspend this belief and say he had some sweet armor on? Yes, right. But we've never really seen that. We've never really seen a Batman get lit up like that with yeah, gunfire. That might have been the aspect that was the most unrealistic to yeah, me. Like, I think that was for me as well. However, I mean, that's two, two, three rounds. They're going through like most. Oh no, Kevlar no, rounds, yeah, yeah. So. No, they, he was getting lit up, and no one decided to shoot him in the face. <laughs> yeah, never. No. no one ever does. Like, oh, <laughs> look at that chin. Let's just <laughs> let's avoid the chin. So I Even guess you know. In those... like, I put yeah. the I put the bat symbol on my chest to direct fire. Like, yeah, dude, that shit's darked out. Your chin's like bright as fuck. That would be what I'd be aiming for. But um, I uh, what I was left wanting was where did he get those wonderful toys? Like, he had so, some shit that like where did he get yeah. it? Yeah. I'm hoping in the later movie, and I think so. I I tried to be fair with. I, I still, as of now, Christopher Nolan's trilogy is the best in my opinion. And, but when I was trying to think about it, like when I went back, did I think that highly of Batman Begins as a solo film, or as the trilogy came out, do I look back on it more favorably as like the beginning setting the tone? So I'm hoping like with these, you know, more movies go on. What I'd like to see in like a se a sequel is I'd love to see flashbacks of like Alfred training him would be awesome. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, training him, like, mm -hmm. like you said, the gadgets, it doesn't need to be a focal point, but showing some of that, like, like you said, how did he get this, this stuff? Like, where did he, is there a Lucius Fox in this world? Is there someone who's assisting him? Um, it didn't feel like it, right? Like it felt like, well, he the felt only like he was personally had was alpha. Alfred. Yeah. He wasn't even part of Wayne Inter enterprises. He didn't see, right. like, you know, yeah. like, and he's not like a tech. He even had tech issues right. in this movie. Like he that was the best the, thing. The, the, the contacts were sweet. Yeah. Oh god, that's the contacts. Yeah, were cool. I wanted to get to that. I, the the contact thing was great. The fact you know with facial recognition and all that stuff, and and even when he gives it to Selena, and he's like tinkering with this like machine that's like the size of like a computer, and he still can't get like the right frequency. Like you could tell this is early adoption right. yeah, for it was this crappy for first, this gadget. Yeah. Yeah. So it's it, it's interesting. Like, where did he get this stuff from? Did he rip it off of Wayne? Did he have prototypes? Did Alfred build it? You know, who's his tech guy? Because right. it's not him for sure. Yet. No. Uh -uh. So. But and the costume, what do you think about the costume overall? I thought it was pretty awesome. sweet. It it, it kind of reminded me of old 40. Like there was a time where he wore that kind of like he had that collar on and it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I can't I don't remember what what. It, uh, like series of, or run that was, but it was, a, I liked it a lot. So I liked having the symbol on. as like a knife. Sure. Like to cut that things. Cool. Yeah. Like that was, that's ingenious. Like instead of utilitarian. Having, like, yeah. Yeah. Something instead of having like a, you know, like a, a knife or something to cut, like in your gadgets or in your belt, it literally just like, he pops it off. You and know, I like he didn't growl. He talked normal. He talked yeah. normal. He didn't, there was none of this. <laughs> It yeah. was, I mean, he lowered his voice, but it was, there was no gruffness. So it would, you heard, when he talked, you heard him talk. No, you know, was, that was cool. I liked that part of it too. In terms of realism also, it was, it was probably like, not to say it was so, okay. So we had, and you talk about the recent ones, obviously I'm not talking about like the Tim Burton stuff, but Christian Bale was jacked. Ben Affleck looked like he ate four human beings oh, yeah, before right. he played mm -hmm. that role. And then, but this, like even Pattinson, I'm sure he did. Obviously he did some fitness stuff, but you never really got like a, a straight shirtless pick. You'd see his back, which his back looked pretty fucking jacked. But there, I remember there being a scene where he was just in like a t-shirt. Maybe it was ill fitting, but his arms looked pretty small to be honest with you. There was a scene where he had a shirt off and he was bending over and he had a pudge. On yes. His I remember that too. And then, but the suit, when he put the suit on, it was more realistic. Like, okay, look dude, like, not everyone's going to be a fucking jacked bodybuilder, you know, fitness expert. But he's like, okay, here's my badass suit that stops two, two, three firearms. Right, you know, right. like I know yeah. that's all I need, really. Um, so I kind of liked that. You know, it was very still the beginning as well. Like you know, um, it was but, cool. But but for year two, he also has tremendous fighting capability. So yeah. there must have been training. Like you said, let's go back and see some of the flashbacks of the training. <laughs> Because it had to have been when he was a kid, right? I mean, it had to have been from the moment his Teenage father years, died yeah. until he became dies to don, decides to don the mask, you know, or the cowl. 
so that would be a cool little you know what that would be a cool like tv uh tv show kind of thing like cast young, a younger yeah like a young you have he's not, he's not quite there. batman but he's yeah. training to be i don't know that'd be cool um what do you uh obviously with the the, the way we kind of got the ending of uh, almost like a no man's land like how do you see the next film and who do you want to see so, in the next film yeah so i right right when it's joker and riddler um talking in the cell you know and the the gotham had been flooded and mm-hmm. i'm instantly thinking that um uh, someone i i thought bane because just at just where i went but you know bane breaks him out of arkham okay uh, bane you know it, it's almost like the um the knight um tells that story where he breaks his back i'm drawing a blank well, nightfall the night nightfall, nightfall yeah. uh, it's like the, the nightfall storyline where bane releases all the prisoners out of arkham so you have right now an aspect where it left us off where Falcone dies. All the crime bosses are now vying for land and for opportunity. You've got a flood in Gotham. You know, what more do you need than to release some of these villains? And then you can have it set up where, you know, Iceberg Lounge, this is Penguin's territory. This is Riddler's territory. This is Joker's territory. This is Bane's territory. You could have it set up like that, especially with the, the infrastructure we are left with you know, going out of the movie, coming into the part two, that seems like a really good way to go. You could mix, you could mix a nightfall slash no man's land storyline. Mm-hmm. So I, I think Justin, you probably have a pretty good idea of my opinion of the in, the end scene. Um, we, we, Justin and I have talked ad nauseum on how like sometimes it, you think about comic book characters, right? And honestly, the epitome of comic book characters coming from a Marvel guy too, but this is the truth is Batman as a hero and Joker as a villain. I mean, these are the top two comic book characters in my opinion. And I I think you'd be hard pressed to say Spider-Man's above Batman, but whatever. So Batman and the Joker. But I think with these movies, and I've said it before is the aspect in the looming nature of the Joker sometimes always overshadows the Batman. Cause everyone's like, okay, you have Batman. So when do we get Joker? Mm -hmm. Um, Mm -hmm. And I, I really did not want them to go this route. I would have liked to see a trilogy without Joker and emphasis on Joker. Um, I wasn't crazy about that end little scene with like the, you know, okay, oh God, okay, now we got Joker again. Um, <laughs> I don't think you're off track, Ryan, with like the the bat the Bane stuff too. But once again, I don't want Bane either. We've right. seen well, Bane, right, like right. we've we haven't well, had we've seen them all. In a let's while. let's get. I want I want a good Poison Ivy. Let's get the characters we haven't seen recently, right? We got Penguin back. We got Riddler back. Hadn't mm-hmm. seen them in a minute. Uh, I like the Mr. Freeze. Bro, let's, let's bring in Court of Two-Face. Owls. Let's get a better I th- Two-Face. I thought they were really pitching Court of Owls when they when they played this whole um, mm-hmm. like secret of like the Waynes and stuff. I was like, oh, shit. This is going to be the Court of Owls in the background kind of pulling the strings mm-hmm. of Gotham and like saying, okay, I can't. When everyone was kind of first talking to me, like, I can't reveal it. Or I'm, I'm dead man. I'm a dead man. And like, okay, Falcone, like he's not that powerful, but right. I was thinking more like Court of Owls. So let's get some of that stuff. That would be cool. Um, I when have we had Court of Owls? It was on a TV show, right? Didn't you we had have it in like Gotham? A, yeah. Okay, so it was like a Gotham. Glimpse. Adam. Yeah, Gotham Glimpse. had everything. Um, it was get just a Talon in there, of. man. Talon. I need that Batman two to skyrocket in price. It the just 50, the new fifty two one, not not yeah. that one from the forties. Going forward. <laughs> Going forward, I think I'd like to see some of these other characters we haven't seen in a minute. Um, let's get a good, uh, let's get some deep, let's get like a good Mad Hatter. Let's get a Mr. Freeze. How about that? Those ones, yes, for sure. It's just tough. Like, how do you, they did a great job with Riddler. Like, that was the thing. Like, okay, you're like, after Jim Carrey, how do you bring in a serious Riddler? And they found it. So now I just feel like they got to figure out a way to bring in like a, realistic serious mr freeze um well they could do so, heart of ice remember that batman animated tv show where he was trying to save his wife and all he wanted to do was save his wife and he was mm-hmm. be, pretty much being a bad guy because he was trying to save his wife that yeah. there's your, there's your storyline yeah he's uh, it, so for me the the setting up for the next movie 
I, I agree with both of you guys with the Mr. Freeze. And I think the way Matt Reeves did this Zodiac Killer Riddler, yeah. you know, we, 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 you know, even previous to animated series, um, you know, the Jim Carrey, the 1966 stuff, you really didn't get a Riddler like this until the Arkham games. When right, they, right. they change it up, when he had all these sadistic saw type puzzles. And so you get the Zodiac Killer Riddler. I think I think a Mr. Freeze in this universe can be grounded in a way where it doesn't need to be, you know, like crazy full suit Mr. Right. Freeze. I, can't think he can, I don't think he can be the primary villain either. Ice to meet you. <laughs> yeah. God, this podcast just got terrible. <laughs> um, I... And I said this to my brother, and I think this would be a great thing. Uh, so you you have this, you had the Riddler, Riddler. Now bring in the fear, bring in Scarecrow, yes. and in a way to bring in Scarecrow and have him throughout the movie in a in an, in the second one is towards the end. Have it where he gets into Arkham and breaks everybody out, and the last scene is Joker's cell opening up, saying, "Now it's my time." And then so. you bring in Joker if you really want a Joker movie. Yeah, I don't want don't Joker. Part, I don't want Joker Part Two. I want Joker Part Three or Part Four. Yeah, I have a question for you guys. Were those twins, Tweedledee and Tweedledum? <laughs> I wondered uh, if it was going to end up being. I honestly thought Penguin was like, "Oh, you ran into the twins," and then he goes, "You know, Tweedledee, Tweedledum." Is what I thought he was going to end up yeah. saying, dude. So, well, did you see Matt Reeves also said he wanted um, Calendar Man has been mentioned as someone that he potentially really? wants to do. Well, you know, they've already got the long Halloween vibe. Maybe yeah. a murder on all the holidays kind of show would be cool, too. I mean, it's a good it one. Would, it would be cool. It very much, I think one of my favorite aspects about this movie was the crime noir and, like, almost criminal procedural aspect. It was, it was the most street-level uh-huh. street level yeah. movie that we've gotten from Batman. So maybe that's what you do. You don't go big, flashy, I'm destroying the world. Yeah, I'm I don't want to see Gotham. Batman fighting Darkseid. I want to see yeah. Batman fighting bad guys. Uh, you, know. you have him like doing the same thing, trying to solve all these mysteries, but like as he's trying to take down Freeze, God damn it, there's some dude killing people on St. Patrick's Day. Now we got to go stop that. You know, I mean, you know? and like <laughs> he's got gonna... all these different things pulling at him, like the Arkham games, you know, where there's one theme, yeah. But then it's like side missions, and you go do them. Like I think that would be really cool. A good, um, like bring in a good uh, uh, Ross Al Ghul. You know, I'm okay with no Ross. Yeah, I'd rather he's a big him. character, like big, too much mythology and too much like supernatural. I guess I was taking it from the detective side of it. You know that. <laughs> yeah. When gotcha. you talk about detective stories, some of the best detective Batman stories have been well, yeah, ones where Ross Al Ghul has been involved. So how do you think they bring in? Ro- oh, sorry, Justin, you were going to say something. No, no, go ahead. No, you, oh. you. So they've talked about obviously we mentioned like in the in the interviews they've said things about Freeze, Court of Owls, Calendar Man, but they've also said Robin. How do you bring in Robin in the this mayor's kind of son? Scenario? The Wait, mayor's, that kid's the, like six years old right now. Yeah, I know, but Batman's only what 24, 25? I mean, Batman's young. That kid's young. They have um, they have a connection where he lost his family. At the end, they showed him again, lifting him up into the helicopter. So they showed yeah. that kid three or four or five times. Mm-hmm. Not bad, but I want I want I want Dick Grayson. I, I don't understand. want some random shithead. You know? I understand, but like I'm that's just saying. Too much how do you bring him in? Of... That's a way of you bring. That's the way you can bring him in. But I don't want another. Do you like Dark it? Knight Rises with a Robin? Right. No, I get it. Know? I understand that part. You want true blue. Yeah, I like the one I liked in the beginning, and I'm sure Ryan and you may have caught this too, Zach. Um, the the clowns in the beginning when they're Tim initiating Drake. that one kid is yeah. Tim Drake. Uh, Tim Drake. Well, from... in my in my mind, that's a parallel. It's the same universe. Batman mm-hmm. scared him so much that he became Robin later. Bat okay. he he met okay so he met Batman in that fight. He then wanted to figure out who Batman was. He figures out who Batman was and becomes later who we know in Titans. That's okay. that's how I put it together in my head. Uh, I like <laughs> that's, that. That's Ryan's universe. Yeah. The Ryan. And then he verse. becomes the old guy from Game of Thrones. Yeah. yeah right. Yeah. All so. right. Well, yeah, and we've you know for anyone for the people that are listening to this, the interview that Matt Reeves did, uh, you know, he said that yes, that is the Joker. He's not the Joker. He is the clown. Um, but he also said in that interview that there was a scene that was taken out that Batman went to go visit him almost like 
you know, a la like calendar man where, you know, he's trying to get information from, you know, a, a certain murder, you know, mm -hmm. kind of be like, is this you in a way, you know, and we've right. seen that in the past where Joker has been locked up and, you know, Batman would go to visit him and be like, what's, you know, is this you, is this your bat? Are you doing this type of thing? And yeah, we didn't get that scene. And I'm sure there, you know, there is that four hour version of Matt Reeves, is the mm -hmm. Batman that I want to see. The Reeves cut. Come on, give us the Reeves cut. Oh, it's going to be there. He says it. It's, you know, I'm sure it's a deleted scene. So, you know, uh, I don't know really where you're going to go next, but, you know, as far as, you know, we're, we're pushing 40 minutes here, you know, we want to make sure everyone checks this out. You know, let's right. just give our, our final review our final numbers. Uh, and you know, one last takeaway from, from the Batman, um, Ryan, why don't you go first? Since we well, already know I, yours. I said it before I give it a 9.8 and that 9.8 is signed by Bill Finger and Bob Kane. <laughs> <laughs> I love this movie. Oh, shit, I C? really, really love this movie. Um, the takeaway is that whole, I mean, move forward, move forward with what you have, Matt Reeves, you marvelous son of a bitch. <laughs> nice. Is that? Um, <clears throat> I think I'm going to go, this might make anger five people. I'm going to go on 9.4. Um, <clears throat> mainly because I want to see where this goes. I think I might, it might be the same thing. Like I said, of Batman begins where I may look favorably more on this movie later. Um, I did very much like this. There were aspects I loved about it. Like I, like I've said it multiple times, the uh, crime noir, the detective aspect, the grounded aspect. Um, I just wanted a little bit more, but obviously time constraints on a movie. It was already a very long movie. You can't get it all. So, uh, but by and far, Penguin Riddler stole the show. I mean, oh, the Peng villains just Penguin crushed so it. Man. I didn't. Sorry to add to it, but uh, I was not expect. So I didn't watch any trailers going into this movie. I okay, sorry. I watched the first one, the first mm -hmm. teaser yeah. trailer, and then I didn't watch anything. So I went in really uh, blind. So Penguin was a very pleasing. I was pleasantly surprised. Mm -hmm. I didn't know how he was going to pull it off, but he friggin' pulled it off. Um, for Justin? myself, after first viewing, uh, I mean, I, I have nothing. I said it. I said it to in our private chat, and I said it to my brother, and I said it to my wife. I don't want to see this movie again in theaters because I don't want to ruin that tainted. I don't want to taint it at all after that first viewing. And for me, it was a ten. I really think it's better than the entire Nolan trilogy, and people are going to be like, "What? You're crazy!" But it uh, you're not really crazy. was a movie. I tried to watch one review on YouTube, and they were trying to compare it to like Spider Man. It's a completely different movie. You can't like, compare the two. You can't. It, this is not a superhero movie. This is a movie. Like that's the thing with the Batman stuff is that you make and and more so with some of these other DC movies with like the Joker and stuff. These are movies. This could be actually up for a nomination. Without a doubt. I don't care. So for me, it was a 10. Going forward, if I see it again and I drop it to a 9.9 .9 or 9.8, <laughs> uh, it is what it is. But and, and again, I'm a little biased because I'm a Batman fan, but this movie was so but being a bat But see, that's the thing. Being a Batman fan, you... Uh, I mean, I would think you would have a more honest opinion about it being a fan. Yeah. You're not just going to sugarcoat it. If you don't like it, you don't like it. At least that's how oh, I yeah. would feel, you know, and damn man it's uh, we've shit on uh we've shit on star wars when it sucks you know Bugaboo look i was not a fan of batman rises to be honest i didn't like what they did with talia i thought talia sucked i thought oh, bane oh, was dark horrible Knight rises. or dark Knight rises yeah. yeah i was not happy with that movie yep. you know so Awful. but i'm a batman fan and it's okay for me to say that you know yeah yeah i guess i guess you're right in that aspect so you know when you when you when you hit it off the my God, when you hit a home run like that. Home run, home run, for sure. I, I don't know what you Grand do. Grand slam, yeah. home run. Yeah, I don't know what you do going forward, but, you know, for all those haters back in 2019 that said, oh, I don't, Robert Pattinson is not my Batman, not my Bruce Wayne. And you fuckers are the worst. Yeah, well, <laughs> but would you say he's still, would you say, I mean, you said the movie's a 10 and the movie has itself, but like, do you think he's a better Batman than like Christian Bale? I mean, is that your take? Yes. Or will time tell? Based on this one better, movie. I think so, he's a better well, Batman. Not necessarily a better Bruce Wayne, but he's mm -hmm. a better Batman. 
he was a more realistic Batman, I think, than Chris than uh, the Chris Nolan Batmans. Yeah, and we've had this conversation before. I think Christian Bale was the best Bruce Wayne. My opinion, what you perceive as Batman, was I think Michael Keaton's version because it was so dark and you he rarely spoke, and it was gritty. With this, the way this shows up, I don't know, man. I think he could be the best Batman. Because when I read way, Batman it's comic books, to him. it's also written and it's done. That's when I the other when I read one. Batman comic books, I see Batman's fists go through people's faces. I see his boot go into their neck, leaving boot prints. Mm-hmm. This Robert Pattinson Batman left boot prints. How about the jingle jangle? It was almost like he was wearing like spurs. I kind of like that. Like there was so much like gunslinger kind of vibes when he would walk, you know. And he was like jingle jangle. It was almost like he was wearing like <laughs> fucking spurs on his boots. I thought that shit was cool, man. I thought that was cool. But yeah, man, man. definitely so, a solid movie. Recommend absolutely. it. Absolutely. One hundred percent. So, uh, closing words, Ryan. We really appreciate you jumping here on the podcast. Of yeah, thanks for inviting a huge, me. Huge, the show. Massive Batman fan. Um, you know, for people that are looking to follow you, where can they find you? You can follow me on Instagram at Dark Side Jedi, um, and you can check out Lords of the Long Box on YouTube every Tuesday and Thursday for our top 10 in our shaker shows and um yeah if i get invited back on the comic-con podcast you can find me here too so awesome. <laughs> thanks a lot guys yeah we appreciate you zach when we dropping this quick. we dropping this monday uh yeah monday the tuesday. yeah yeah i think monday the sooner the better so if you're listening so if this to this drops, of course if it drops monday the 7th um also tune in to my whatnot sale, Manimal Mondays on uh, 7 p.m. Mountain Time every Monday. So um, yeah, check me out. Awesome, and you know where you can find the links for Manimal as well. It's always in our link tree. So you know, click on the profile on our Instagrams, whether it's mine, Zach's, or the Comic Con Podcast Instagram. You can find all of our whatnot stuff as well. So oh, you know, I yeah. just thought of something before you sign off. It just popped Dude, in my head. Go when Falcone, <laughs> when Falcone <laughs> to Batman says. Or to, to who, who I forget what he said. He goes, Oh, is this Zoro over here? Look oh, he Zorro. says it. To, he said it to Gordon. Yeah. So was he in right, here? You with, that he's he, like, Are you that, with Zoro here? Yeah. So the movie he got that his parents got killed at was Zoro. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Was he implying that he had something to do with the death of the Waynes? I think it's probably just a shout out. Or that was like just a, a funny, out, a just funny a comment. Easter egg. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. All right. That's it. Um, that's it for all of us here at the Comic Con podcast. Uh, we appreciate everybody again. Check us out on our weekly shows as well. Spotify, iTunes, Google Podcasts, and Anchor FM. And that's our Batman review. Peace out, everybody. Later.